Welcome back everyone to our gameplay series of Pure Farming 2018. So I am actually very excited about today's video. Uh, we've talked a lot over the course of this series so far about varying different things about how I wish there were more options in the game and, and, and mods and all of that sort of thing. But in deciding where I wanted to go in the future with this series, because one of the things that I've been talking about over the last couple of videos is that I wanted to take a break from and really get away from trying to build our farm because I feel like we've gone way beyond what we can do with our farm simply because we don't have enough help, enough automation uh, through the AI to really have much of a big farm because we have to do most everything ourselves. So in looking around, I decided to come to the Germany map. So that's where we are right now. Now, for those of you who play the game know that this is the smallest map, and it's the smallest map by a good margin, I would say, uh, especially with regards to things to do. Uh, and we're going to be getting into all of that um, as we move forward in today's video and probably in subsequent videos as well, depending on uh, how much I enjoy it and how much you guys enjoy it as well. But I feel like with this map, we have finally hit on what the developers had in mind for this game okay we know they didn't put extensive uh, support into the AI so we know that from the very beginning the AI are tricky at best to see if you're going to get anything of value out of them but when you come to a map like this to me and and I didn't look around and I didn't really do a whole lot because I wanted to save that so that we could experience that uh, together but as I was looking around briefly on the map, trying to decide if this is where I wanted to go for the next few videos, it instantly dawned on me that this is what the developers had in mind with this game. If you are going to look for a slower paced game where you as the player are going to do all or nearly all of the work yourself, this is the place to be because it's a much smaller map to deal with. You don't have you know, 35 or 40 fields to deal with. You don't have huge fields to deal with. You don't have huge numbers of greenhouses and animal uh, enclosures and, and all that sort of thing uh, to do, you know, in, in several orchards and all that. All of those things are fine for multiplayer and for uh, games where you have mod support and AI support, but not this game. This game is much more of a stripped down and, and you play it doing nearly all of it on your own. So I am actually very excited about getting started on this map. And like I said, we'll see how it goes. So what I did is I took money out of the equation. You can see in the top right hand corner, we have a little over 11, uh, excuse me, $1.1 million. We started with a million dollars and then I instantly sold everything but the truck you see behind us. Because I wanted us to get a fresh start. I wanted us to be able to do what we wanted to do and purchase what we wanted to purchase without having to worry about money really at all. So I want to start out after those few words. And I want to start out by just taking a quick look at the map itself. And you can see there's not a lot here. Uh, around the outside area of the house, you can see there is a paved road which goes around the outer portion of the map. And there's nothing to do up here other than sell. Okay, over here you can see we can sell uh, cows and sheep to the butcher. We've got a place to sell the wool from the sheep. And then we've got our place to sell, you know, a food market there to sell what we're going to be growing if we grow anything in the greenhouse. Then we've got a grain warehouse. And then you come down here, there's a place to refuel. There's a watering tank. And then we've got our trade center where we would be purchasing then we've got a place to drop off the milk and of course our logistics center which is where we would travel to and from so really everything production wise everything we're going to want to do is all contained within this very small area and let me tell you it is a very small area once you start to move around on the map so this seems like the way the game was designed really for a map like this so that you're doing everything or nearly everything on your own and you can see already we have a few things that we own there is a grand total of one shed on this entire map and we already own it we already own the sheep barn so we don't have to purchase or upgrade that we already own it you can see a few uh, chicken coops over here to be built and some rabbit hutches that we can deal with 
But other than that, we've got one field, we've got one cow barn, and that's about it. I, so there's really not a lot to capture your attention. It gives you a little bit of everything. You can do some field work, but you've only got one field, so you don't have to worry too much about you know, running back and forth between multiple fields and making sure everything's going all right. You've got the field work, you've got the sheeps and the cows, and then you've got these smaller animals if you choose to do so. So what we need to decide first is how do we want to get this thing going? So if we walk around a little bit, you see we've got our shed here with nothing in it, then we've got our grain storage over there, and then our fields are going to be, or our field singular, is going to be over in that direction uh, as well as uh, our sheep and then the cows will be over in that direction as well. So let's go ahead and start off by doing some purchasing. So let's pull up our map once again and let's actually head over to our purchasing center. Okay, get out of that. And now we need to come over and I'm sure there is our stern looking guy. Yep, there he is waiting for us to buy something. So apparently he's just going to follow us around the world as we go to the different maps. I'm going to press B to buy machines. And there's something a little different here. In our last video where I talked about the 1.2 update to the game, we added workshop support. Uh, not that that was the first implementation of mods, but it was the first official implementation of mods in the game through the workshop. And so now we've got an importer option here at the bottom. So we're going to choose that. And we only have one option in here. And right now, uh, as of the recording of this video, there's only two things in the workshop. One of them is a buggy, which I'm not really interested in because we can't do any work with that. Although it'd be fun to run around and jump um, and do some things on the map with it, but we can't really do any work with it. So there, But there is one tractor, and it is the Pure Farming Limited tractor, and it is a reskin. Uh, unfortunately, the one downside of this is you can tell there's really no information for us about this tractor. So there's no way for us to know anything about it other than how much it costs. So hopefully they will address something like that in the future. We need to know is it a heavy tractor, a medium tractor, you know, horsepower numbers, things like that. So we'll know what sort of implements we can use with it. But for now, we're going to go ahead and buy this. Okay, we're going to go ahead and accept that. Now we're going to need uh, some other things. Let's see, we're going to need what? Uh, we're going to need under cultivation, we're going to need a, we're going to stick with sort of the basic plow here, not the smallest plow, but we're going to get one a little bit bigger. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, we're going to need, what all do we need, quite frankly? Uh, we're going to use the drill because the one crop that we're going to have access to is going to be canola. Now it's got some other names across the world uh, which quite frankly I'm afraid to say on the video because I'm afraid Google and, and YouTube will flag the video so we're not going to say the name of them but uh, canola is the name I'm familiar with for it so we're actually going to go ahead and buy the drill. That'll take care of cultivating as well as the seeding aspect of it. Uh, let's see, we're going to need Yeah, let's go ahead and get the smaller. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and get the bigger of the two. It shouldn't matter because I am almost for certain that our modded tractor is a heavy tractor. Uh, and we'll take a look at some reasons why I believe that here uh, momentarily. But for the most part, I, I do believe that that is the case. And finally, we'll get the field sprayer, which is very difficult to work with because it is so huge, particularly when it is unfolded. All right, so let's go ahead and come out of that just for a moment. And let's just take a, a brief look at whatever we at all the things we've got. So we've got our sprayer there, which, of course, is huge. There is our fertilizing tank, which is pretty good size. We've got a lopsided tractor over here. And then, of course, our plow. And we've got our sower over there. I'm not sure why that's lopsided. Hopefully this will. Yeah, there we go. All right, now let's hop out. And back up a little bit. So here we go. This is our first modded tractor on the workshop, that is. And you can see it's got a reskin to it with the Pure Farming logo on the sides. 
Uh, and I think the mod creator did a great job. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the name written down. I apologize for that. But uh, I think it is a very good job. You can see some things that look a little different to me. Maybe they're not uh, all that different. But here around the gas tank, uh, some things look different. I really like the look of this skin. And I'm sure they're going to be continuing to make some updates in the future. But this looks really good uh, to me just from the start. Now, having said that, uh, you can tell sort of by the size of it. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a heavy tractor. I mean, look at the large tires on this thing. And if you put it up right next to one of the other heavy tractors, it's of similar size. So I feel pretty certain that we have a good tractor uh, to get us moving forward. All right, let's start out. Now, we did not get a, a, a front weight. Let's see. Wow, this thing stops in a hurry. As soon as I let go of the throttle, it immediately wants to stop. So we'll have to get used to that. Some different handling options. And again, right now I have no way of knowing exactly what we have here. I don't know how much horsepower it is. I don't know anything other than the assumption I'm making at this point that it is a heavy tractor. Let's see what kind of speed we got. It looks like about 20, 21 miles an hour. Okay, there's our logistics center here on the right. Again, everything on this map is very compact, which... In this case, based on the way they've designed the game and implemented a lot of the stuff in the game, I think that's this is actually the perfect size map. All right, we're going to head over to our singular field. Now here you can see there are, this is the sheep area right here. We'll come back to it uh, momentarily. And then we come into an area for our cows. You can see the milking machine over there. All right, now we come to our field and you notice it's only $10,000. This field is not gonna be very much and I believe it is actually six acres. So not a bad, not a bad amount and a bad size. Yeah, there we go, six acres. And you can see the crop type that's best for us would be canola. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's the only option you have to grow on this map. So let's go ahead and purchase that. Now I'm gonna give the AI a shot here. Uh, and what I plan to do is we're going to give them a shot and see how they do. Let me press F1 here to get my options back out because I forgot which key it is for the worker. All right, let's move out of the way. Make sure our worker at least gets started. And I know we've had some horror stories with the AI in the past, uh, but we're going to see how they do here. Again, this is we're going to be very laid back on this and just see how it goes and not worry too much about how they do. You can see already uh, they are missing an entire <laughs> an entire portion of a row here. So we're off to a bit of a bumpy start there, but that's okay. We can deal with that. We'll let him get on about his business. And we are actually going to work our way over to the sheep. Now, you notice, I mean, I really like the look of this map, aside from the the mountain and the rocky areas they're using for borders. I'm not a fan of that. But uh, that aside, I really do like uh, the look of this map. It's just got a sort of a serene feel to it, uh, to me. Maybe it's just because I'm in a good mood today. Uh, maybe that's what it is. But as we come over to uh, the sheep barn, you can see we don't have to do any construction. We already own this. Uh, over to the left here, there are some pallets. My guess, because I haven't done this yet, my guess is that that's where our wool is going to show up. We'll have to figure out how to deal with that. And then, of course, our fodder area is right over here to the right. Okay, now we can buy an animal. No option to upgrade. So it's already fully upgraded. So let's see how many sheep we can purchase. Spam that purchase button. And we can get, okay, 35 so now we have 35 lambs, and we'll press R. Let's get some fodder and see how much how much money we're going to be spending on that. But again, we're not doing this to make a whole bunch of money off of it. We're doing this to have fun. All right, so we got 35 lambs and $2,500 worth of fodder. Let's go ahead and walk through here. Okay, no no feed shows up in the troughs on either side. Of course, over here, there's a door to open that would allow the sheep 
over there and a door over here that would allow them to come in and get the feed, but those doors remain closed. And let's see, we've got a few lambs over here to this side with, once again, no feed showing up in the trough. And then we've got the majority of them that appear to be uh, out roaming around. Okay, let's see. Can we actually go through these? Are these going to open for us? No, we cannot go through that. What about here? No, we cannot open that either. Okay, so once you get into the sheep enclosure, you're kind of stuck with where you are. But, all right, so we've got some sheep. Again, keeping in mind uh, my thoughts about the map being sort of what the developers had in mind for the game instead of getting really extensively into uh, the AI and a lot of automation that would allow you to grow your farm. This looks like kind of what uh, I can imagine they would have in mind. We've got, we've got one enclosure for sheep, one enclosure for cows. So let's look and see what we got with the cows. Of course, the cows, for us, we're already very familiar with. So let's work our way around there. Again, you can see this map is is pretty small. I'll tell you what, though. Um, how do we get in here? Can we get in here? I'm sure we can. The question is how. Oh, we got some people. Some people over here having a picnic. Oh, yeah, we're grilling out. Now, that's something I'm definitely interested in. All right, I want to... The reason I'm coming over here, I want to actually buy these. Uh, I don't plan on doing anything with them, but I kind of like the look of of these around the farm. It just makes everything look better. So I want to go ahead and build these. There we go. Looks better than seeing the uh, construction materials out there. All right, now we're going to work our way over to... Okay, we've got a grand total of one greenhouse on this map, and here it is. It looks to be the same size as what we are used to, so that's good. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy, and I've mentioned this in the past, you can see our guy, he's already missing a lot, so <laughs> some things never change, I guess. Uh, but one of the things that, that I have talked a lot about in the past, and one of the reasons why I really like having AI and mods like course play involved is because there's just something really fulfilling to me about being in the game and as I walk around the map or drive around the map seeing the AI working on the fields or or doing whatever it is they might be doing I enjoy seeing that it gives me that feeling of uh, of an, a living world something that that we really don't have um, in this particular game to a great degree because the AI are so very limited. All right, let's go ahead and set up our cow operation. Go ahead and purchase this. Again, money is not intended to be an issue. We are here to have a little bit of fun. Let's go ahead and upgrade this so we can have maximum number of cows. and spam that buy button again so we can purchase all the cows we need there we go 45 cows let's come over here to the fodder I really have high hopes for this game in the future um, but it will depend on how much they allow modders to do how much of the game they open up so far they really haven't opened up anything other than to add some vehicles and look at this. Wow. This is okay. Well, at least he's consistent. I mean, he's consistently missing row after row. So <laughs> how about that? Oh, boy. All right. So we've gotten now some cows out roaming around. You can see there our calves in both of these areas. We've got our slurry tank as well as our manure area. Where is, oh, there we go. There's our uh, milk storage. 
And yeah, I'm really liking this. This is this is very nice. I like the fact that you've got a field and then you can come right off the field straight in here through the grain storage. This is nice. This is nice. Again, if you're going to have to do everything uh, on your own without a whole lot of help from the AI, as you can clearly see behind me, then it's nice to have everything so compact and, and very centralized uh, as far as the storage area. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm, I'm looking forward to spending a little time on this map and just seeing the way things work out. I mean, we've got our first indication of just sort of a look around. And, okay, we're a little past halfway on the field here, <laughs> roughly, if you don't count all the areas he's missed. But there's really not a whole lot else that we need to purchase. So uh, we had plenty of money. I'll head over here in just a moment. And we'll take care of these uh, chicken coops again, just so we can have the visual of a completed chicken coop there. But if you look around, other than the greenhouse, there's really nothing else for us to purchase. And, and eventually we'll move back over here and pick up the rest of our uh, equipment. But... Yeah, I mean, this things are looking very good. In fact, let's go ahead and head back over because I'd like to have one more tractor at least. Uh, and I'm thinking we might get more than that. Let's look around. Uh, we're going to have one tractor that's going to be on the fields at all times. We're going to need one for the cows and probably... We might even get one separate for the sheep uh, once we see what we need to do with the wool. Uh, so for right now, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and just keep getting more of these. They cost $67,000. Another reason to believe that they are the heavy tractor because if you take a look, once you get into the heavy tractors, that's where you start to get into fifty and 60000 plus. So yeah, I feel like it's almost certainly a a heavy tractor now the question is where is my tractor that I want to purchase I must have gone right by it yep there it is there's my McCormick tractor so we'll probably get one of those uh, in fact let's just go ahead and get one and if we come back to the importer Go ahead and get another one of those because I do quite like that design and that paint scheme. Again, I'm not sure why it shows up looking weird. The McCormick does not, but that is quickly remedied. All right, in fact, uh, let's go ahead. I forgot to get our front end loader. We're going to need that for sure. All right, loaders. Let's see, we want the 180. Wow, look at that. Full bail fork right there. That is huge. All right, and we are going to need what? Uh, let's see, let's get the large bucket. Oh, not enough space in the shop. All right, so we're going to have to come back. We've got to get rid of some stuff. Uh, did we not purchase... Oh, there it is, right over there. Let's go ahead and use the McCormick. Sort of move this out of the way as I run over the front end loader. And let's see, can we just move this out of the way? Because we got some more stuff to purchase. All right. Let's back that out of the way. That should give us two more spaces. Let's come back in under the loaders. Large bucket for the manure. Okay, that'll take care of that part. What else do we need? Uh, we are going to need, oh, we're going to need a, a manure wagon, which I believe is this one if I'm not, yeah, the manure spreader. It's always a beautiful thing whenever I have an opportunity to buy a bunch of stuff. All the more reason to... Let's see, where is my... Yeah, there it is. There's the bucket. All 
Let's see, we need to... Yeah, raise this up just a little bit. It scrapes the ground pretty badly when you first get it. Let's see if it's going to let me do this. Nope, not going to let me do it without lowering this thing down. I was hoping it would. There we go. Press G. We'll attach our accessory. And let's see if I can work our way back out of here. Okay, we're also going to need a, a milk cistern. Ooh, that was some tremendous reversing skills right there. Let's try that again. All right, now the question is, can we get out of here? Uh, let's try to get this. Oh, are we going to make this? Can we make it? Yes, we can. We're just going to run that sign flat over. We don't need that thing here anyway. Alright, yeah, this is my kind of action here, getting to purchase a whole bunch of stuff and then get to bring it back over to the farm and prepare it for the future work that we're going to be able to do with it. So we still got some more stuff to purchase, at least uh, the milk trailer I know of. And let's see, let's go ahead and just take the scenic route around the side here. Again, I just can't get over I really do like the look of this, this quaint little, little map. Um, as opposed to the huge expanses of the Montana map. It looks like he is actually, he may actually be done. Is he done? Yes, he is. Well, sort of. Alright, let's see what I can do with this. I think about right there should be pretty good. That doesn't entirely block all of our area. So we're good there. Okay, we'll let our guy just hang out next to the field while we head back over and see what else we've got to purchase. So we need something for the milk, and we're also going to need a, a slurry trailer as well. I like it. I like it. The more I... The more we move around this map, the more I think I could get used to this map. Okay, let's hop out right here so that we don't get in the way of any of the new stuff we're about to buy. Okay, what about under other? What else is in here that we might need? Okay, so there's some stuff for bailing, tethering. Okay, no, not really anything I can think of. Let's go back to trailers and let's see we'll need a water trailer at some point. Let's see there is our slurry trailer and our our milk trailer. Uh, other than that I think we're pretty good for now. Uh, of course, we're, st we're still going to need a combine. We're going to need some additional trailers. Or at least one additional trailer uh, in order to work with that sort of stuff. But, but yeah, we are well on our way. All right, let's go ahead while we're here. And let's get this milk. this milk trailer out of the way. Let's try not to ruin the sign this time. It has been so nice as to respawn for us. Let's try to let it stay there a little bit longer than we did last time. So 
So how about that? In one video, we've managed to purchase basically everything on the map. I mean, that's it didn't take long. It did not take long. All right, let's see. Where do we want to leave this? Let's leave it over here. The last thing I really want to do... Oh, I was hoping I had more room to get around there. I was kind of hoping to put it on the other side there. But it doesn't look like that is going to be... Ooh, look at me jackknife this trailer right quick. I did not want to have to back up with this trailer. And now you can see why. Right, we'll just go ahead and leave it right over here. Alright, that should do it. And for now, we'll hop out. Let's actually hop over to... to the field. Let's just take a quick glance at how good of a job he did. Yeah, yeah, that, that won't get it done. I still think there are a few relatively easy fixes they could do for the AI that would really help out a lot with this, uh, such as just artificially expanding the work area uh, for these things, like make it the work area 1.5 times the normal work area for whatever the implement is and that should help out quite a bit on its own and that way you don't have to worry about uh, these guys being perfect. Oh look we got a cow out. We have got a cow. Is that the only one? So one of our cows or calves has managed nope he didn't get out. He's telling he's shaking his head no he did not get out. So this guy Yep, he's going to make a run for it, so maybe we're going to have one fewer cows. So I, I think this is as good a place as any to end our first video here. Let's see if I can get this cow to cooperate with me. Nope, I can't even get close to this guy. So we'll call it a video here. Thank you very much for joining me, and stay tuned as we will continue our gameplay here on the Germany map in Pure Farming 2018.